Hey guys, welcome back to the channel Everyday Carry for the Everyday Guy. The Kiron Laser Reactive Training Targets. We're gonna talk about this, I think it's freaking amazing. Cue the tactical intro. Point nine. Okay guys, so very rarely am I as impressed by gear as I am with this training system. Not just the system, but the cost of the system. It is amazing value for money. And I think pretty much everyone should own something like this. It is freaking awesome. There are two targets we're going to talk about today. I'm talking, I'm taking the whole system, right? The one is the normal Keron target. The other one is a speed target. Speed. I'm going to explain how they work to you and then we're also going to include one of these laser cartridges. So this is a battery powered cartridge and your striker would hit the back of the cartridge as you pull the trigger and it would emit a burst and that would effectively trigger these targets. Okay, so for the sake of YouTubes, I'm going to try to show as little of the firearm as possible but I will roll in beetle as you saw to illustrate a few things. Okay, so first, let's talk about the standard Kieron target. Now, what happens is you put it on by holding the down button, right? It beeps, and then it checks the ambient light. See, it's freaking out because of the lights in my, uh, in my studio, but... Uh. Okay, so it's going crazy because I've got very high-powered lights in the studio here. Okay, so let's just do that. Okay. So, that's a reasonable amount of ambient light for it to work. Now, I'm going to put this here. Okay, I can't face it towards you because of my studio lights. It freaks out the, the, the system. That's the first thing I want to talk to you about. This thing is light specific, but up until now, it, that's never happened. It's just now that we're under direct studio lighting that it's saying, listen, this is too much light. I've used it inside the house during the day and it works fine. Okay. So this target emits an audible beep whenever I'm going to take the, the, the laser round and just depress it as if it was you pulling trigger on your firearm whenever you hit the target. There you go. So there's no timer, no nothing. You can take that, that um, the, the, the beep off if you're making too much noise and then it'll just flash. I wish I could show you the flash. Uh, let's see. Let's see very quickly. Okay, cool. Check this. So yeah, I see it's going crazy. I was about like that. See that? This is not ideal circumstances because as I said, we are under direct light, like lights pointed right at that. But using it in any other circumstance in and around your house, I've not had this problem. So, so that's really useful for you to practice your draw stoke, for you to practice your trigger press, your aim, because the light coming out of here, out of this round, is traveling at light speed. Okay, so pretty much as that shot breaks, as the firing pin hits the back of this round, that is exactly when this target will be activated or not activated. Now, I'm going to put it off so it doesn't freak out when I turn it around. And I'll leave like the manual and all those things linked down in the video description below. So you can go and read up about it and, and all those things. Now, if you want to take it a step further, so it's off now, you can get yourself one of these. Now, this is actually, it's on the, the Kieran website and you basically just slide it underneath um, the red and the black pieces of plastic and now you've got a smaller target so now you can work on distance for example if you're running this in your garage 
and you don't have a large distance, you put this over it and it's a smaller target which simulates a target further away. Also, this is like a South African um, competition target size. I don't, I don't shoot competition, so I don't know what the size are, but it says so on the site. Okay, so that is just one very simple example of what you can do with this. With just this target, you can set it up in a room, switch the lights off, and as you sweep your house, you can imagine this target is a bad gun. As you find him, you take a shot. That kind of thing. It's cool if you have a partner. So, so Michelle, my girlfriend, really plays along. And so she would basically put the targets in. She would say it's basically somewhere in the living room. And then switch the lights off and I would work my way through the house or whatever the case may be. And then find the target and shoot it. Now, I do just want to add, you have to put this round into your actual firearm. Okay. Practice safe firearm habits. Make sure that it is only this round in the vicinity. Okay, there's no reason for you to have live rounds anywhere when you are training. Also, make sure that everyone in your house is aware of what you're doing. And what I mean by that is, whilst people may know you have a firearm, it's not necessarily cool for someone to walk out of a bathroom and have a firearm pointed at their face. Loaded or unloaded, especially, especially loaded. But even unloaded, it's just not cool. If you don't have a, a home environment that where you can control that and you do want to invest in this, then you need to look at the way that you can use it without affecting the lives of those around you. It's not cool as an everyday carrier to um, have your, your, your girlfriend, husband, wife, son, daughter, mother, father, whatever the case may be, scared to move around the own house because you're busy training with your actual, with your real gun. This does require a real firearm in order to work. So bear that in mind, be a responsible everyday carrier, practice your four rules at all times um, and train safely. You are going to have to put your finger on the trigger for these things to work. So I want to stress it is your responsibility as a responsible everyday carrier to make sure you are doing what is everything that is required to when you use these things that it's done so safely and that there are no mishaps. This particular YouTuber and no other YouTuber and no Facebook friend or even personal friend is going to come to your rescue if you negligently discharge around and someone gets hurt and you're in court. So take that upon yourself. It is your responsibility. Okay? Be safe. Now, moving on from that. So that is my uh, take on the Kieran target. Now, this is the, just the basic target. It doesn't have a speed time or anything like that. It just goes beep every time um, the red light flashes on it when, once it's on. This is operated by two AA batteries and the battery life is really good. It switches off after like an hour of non-usage. And when you put it on, you like stand clear so it can pick up the ambient light and it'll tell you about beeping if there's too much ambient light. But so far, other than now, I've never had an ambient light problem using it in my house. These things are for indoors, okay? If you're outside in the sun, it's, it's not gonna work due to the its ambient light requirements. Also, because it's going to pick up the light from this laser cartridge, you can't have too much light. Like, don't have a massive window shine directly on it. So, bear that in mind. Draw your curtains and you're going to be fine. Now, the Kieron Speed Target, okay, this is the bee's knees. Personally, if you wanted my opinion, I would rather buy this with this than a shot timer. I actually googled shot timers today and the one I quite like was something like... 5,000 Rand, 4,799 Rand for a shot timer. And I mean, I understand if that's what it costs, that's what it costs, it's fine, I, I get it. But that's a lot of bucks. This is 1,799 Rand and this is 999 Rand. And effectively, this is going to give you so much more um, training options. Now, I do want to stress, this does not in any way mean you must not go to the range and practice or you must not do courses. I'm only talking about at-home dry fire training. Going to the range, trigger time, pull and trigger and run, and the fire goes bang, is just as important. But we live in difficult financial times. We all know what's happening with COVID worldwide. People are struggling for cash. Ammo is expensive as is range fees. So getting the opportunity to train at home with metrics is very vital. Now, I'm a huge advocate of dry fire. I would dry fire around 70 rounds or 70 draw strokes almost every day. The problem with that is you pick up your front sight, you squeeze the trigger and you feel, well, I'm getting decent, I'm getting a reasonably good um, sight picture, sight alignment, and I'm squeezing the trigger and it's pretty much, I would imagine that I would go where I think it's gonna go. 
This target will not only tell you whether you are accurate, it will also tell you how slow or how fast you are, which is vital. I think it's an absolutely amazing piece of gear. So it's got five modes. I'm not gonna put it on because you saw what happened with the um, normal target, I just freaked out there. I'll take you through the modes, okay? First mode is called shot timer manual start. Basically, you'll put it on and it'll do a countdown, uh, stand by, three, two, one, beep, and you shoot. Now, what had happened is it'd pick up your, your, your time to first shot. So from the beep, your first shot, let's say it's 1.4 seconds, right? You can then rack the slide, shoot again, that kind of thing. It's gonna continually roll on, so it'll measure your splits as well. So where you would use that, for example, right? is if you wanted to test your, your malfunction drills. So you take your first shot and it's 1.4 seconds. Do a tap rack and take a next shot and you could do that within two seconds, right? This will give you that information on the screen. It'll give you your splits and everything on the screen and you can scroll up and down. And it's up to like 99 rounds, okay? The next mode is shot timer, shoot to start. It's basically the exact same thing, except it gives you the opportunity to maybe stand back. Let's say you put it on and, and you're moving a bit further away from the actual unit, you would then shoot it, rack the slide, and then it'd be a, like a, a countdown um, as to when it's gonna start. So you're basically manually starting it. The third mode is competition speed draw or speed draw competition as it appears on the actual unit. What happens is you put it on and it sort of randomly generates a time between five and seven seconds and beeps and you take a shot and then it picks up that time and then it resets itself. Then you'll randomly generate another time between five and seven seconds, beeps to take a shot and that sort of thing. Now five, between five to seven seconds should be enough for a competition style holster because it's probably outside the waistband. The fourth option is speed draw concealed carry, right? So now it's gonna randomly generate time between 10 and 17 seconds because you may have to reset your cover garment between shots and that sort of thing. So you put it on, it would go beep, you'd shoot, it would pick up 1.4 seconds, and then you'd have a randomly generated time between 10 and 17 seconds when it's going to beep again. That's enough time for you to reset your firearm, reset your cover garment, and stand in the ready position. And then the fifth one is basically just a replication of this one. You just shoot. There's no time limits, no nothing. It's just basically you put it on, and it, it just does what this does. Now, in my opinion, this... The standard target is a thousand bucks. The speed target is one seven. Go for the speed target. It does everything this one does and more, right? It definitely improves improves your accuracy. And it'll also give you that metric of speed versus time versus distance, right? So have a look at this. Okay, so that's 1699 on a 3.5 centimeter diameter target at about 10 yards. You see what I mean? You can like use it, put this uh, cover plate on it, right? Position it further away and you will sort of see it takes a bit longer to, to, to pick up that, that perfect sight picture with a target this small at 10 yards. Now, my metric, my baseline for speed is nothing more than 1.7 seconds. If I'm at more than 1.7 seconds from concealment, then I've got to up that because I believe that's a standard sort of tactical speed requirement for, for, for concealed carry efficiency. So I make sure no matter what I'm shooting, I drill it down till I can get that target at um, 1.7 seconds or less. Another thing you can position these guys at different altitudes. Remember, you might be on the second floor of your house and you're your bad guy might be running up says you have to aim downwards. A lot of guys on the range, you run, you run drills and it's all sort of chest level, right? You aren't always sure whether or not you're going to be shooting a guy below you, a guy above you, that sort of thing. Or having to defend yourself, shall I say, against someone who is either above you or below. You might be at the bottom of your stairs and someone's running up the stairs to get to your wife and kids, you know, or running down the stairs towards you with a knife. You've got to make that call. And so you've got to be able to train accordingly. So having, having the ability to elevate this or put it sort of at the lower level does help with training. Now, the, the thing that's important is these things have to register accurately, right? Otherwise, you're not really getting an accurate metric of, of whether your accuracy uh, is on or not. So have a look at this. Okay, guys, so one of the important factors about this target is if you're going to run a paper overlay, 
it's got to only affect the non-overlaid area. So we are empty and safe. I was just running drill, so don't worry about that. And what I want to show you is if I shoot the target on the paper, it doesn't pick up. It doesn't beep. But if I shoot it even slightly on the actual non-covered area, it gets a beep. So your accuracy with this is not in question. If you shoot the, the um, plastic around it, you're not going to affect the, the actual zone. So it definitely is a measure of accuracy. So as you saw, they are pretty accurate, right? I mean, if you're hitting the paper, it's not going to register. If you're hitting the plastic, it's not going to register. You're going to have to hit that zone. And I mean, you can have fun with this. You can cut an even smaller target, right? If, you're, if your room where you're training is super small, make this target really, really small. And it'll simulate shooting at distance. And I'll tell you what, once you shoot this constantly, go into something like this, you won't believe how much faster you get. I, this has definitely improved my speed and accuracy. Now... There are other training tools, something like an airsoft pistol, right? These are cool. This is going to go bang now, chill, guys. There's nothing, there's nothing in the, the, the firearm um, and the mag is empty. These are cool, but you have to contend with that. And also, it's firing a projectile, right? There's a, a BB coming out of that thing, so you've got to be very careful about where you shoot. Um, and, you know, eyes, ears, that sort of thing, so... So I understand that these things do work. The nice part of this is that the slide reciprocates, which is cool. Um, it would be cool if you could combine something like this with, where is that, with something like this, you know, to get that slide reciprocation so that we could have uh, an example of recoil. But as it stands, I think this combined with the speed target is probably the best training at home training tool you could you could get i can't think of anything better than this really i can't also as you can see i run a red dot right for confirmation that the red dot is zeroed i mean if you can hit this at 10 meters um you pretty much zeroed on your red dot right also confirmation of your trigger press your because there's no recoil the slide does like as you saw with a with a training pistol um, because there's no recoil it is only your trigger press that you have that, that, that is working, okay? If your trigger press is off, it's, going, it's definitely going to show up. And funnily enough, my trigger press was off. I was one of those guys shoots a bit left. And I didn't pick it up when I was running this because it's big enough. But when I started doing this at distance, I started realizing I'm constantly hitting it left. And you can see when the laser pops off this white paper. Um, and it, that sort of brought me more... Uh, Sent I worked on my gripper, but it's actually more grip related than, than trigger press related side topic But that that's the usefulness of these things. I have used this every day for the past two and a half weeks For two reasons one I tried to train every day to try to do dry fire every day even before I got this But two I wanted to make sure the buttons survived, right? Um, I didn't want people to buy things based on a review I didn't like after a week and a half the buttons no longer click the buttons Still click perfectly. The way this works, I'm going to try to hold it like this so it doesn't get affected by light. Right? You put it on. Okay. Checks the battery. Um, checks the ambient light. Too much. Something with too much flicker. Okay, let me turn it around. Checking light stand clear. Ambient level okay. Okay, right? So that's fine for me. So I'll run you through the modes. Unfortunately, you can't see. Just work with me, right? You... Press and hold the menu button, right? It's going to beep. And then you can cycle through the mode. So you've got speed draw, competition draw, speed draw, concealed carry, uh, free shot, no timer. And the first two is shot timer, time start. And um, shot timer, shoot to start. So I'm going to go speed draw, concealed carry, right? Okay. Now it says carry, draw, pause. Now there's going to be a bit of a pause between 10 and 17 seconds. So please excuse the silence. Okay, so as it beeped, I pressed the button and that was shot time number one was in 0.329 seconds. Okay, so now it's, now it's already spooling up for the second round, right? And that was 1.09 seconds shot time number two. And it goes like that. Let me just put it off. 
and it goes like that up until, up until 99 shots and then it, you have to like reset it. I can't stress this enough how much use you can get out of this. You can set this guy up and this guy and you can move and shoot, you can run drills. For example, let, let's say you want to make it super complicated and you want to run, and I'm just going to give you an example here, you want to run drills like um, malfunction drills. So you set the shot timer, right, and you fire your first shot, bang, not, say 0.9 seconds, you're super fast, right? You do a tap rack, fire the second shot, takes, and that takes you two seconds, great. Let's say your tap rack failed and it's a magma function, do a speed reload, fire your third shot, and you do that in 2.7 seconds. This can tell you all of that as well as measure your accuracy. So if you're super good at three meters, move five meters away, move 10 meters away. By the time you get to the range, all you really have to worry about is recoil management because you'll have your, your fundamentals of draw stroke down. Now, I do want to stress as well, just because you're training at home doesn't mean you must forego um, the the important fundamentals of pistol and firearm safety. Keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready for it to go bang. I personally, my draw stroke is out of the holster. As I build my grip, my finger begins to get on the trigger and at the apex of my draw stroke, I squeeze the trigger. But I can also stop that at any time. And that's something you have to make sure you drill. Okay, guys, firearm safety, vital. We are EDCers. We are the example to the community of what people should be. We hold ourselves to a higher standard. So ensure that when you're training, you train the standard as well. And the next part is using this, you've got to have a bit of imagination. Okay, I, I almost want to say, and it's so weird, you've got to almost have fun with it. Okay, look at your house. And fortunately for me, it's just myself and my girlfriend. So when I'm training, like I said, I tell her, listen, Michelle, hang out in the room. I'm going to be going through the house. Let me know if you want to come out or whatever and I'll holster up. Just because I'm using a training round doesn't mean I don't respect those people around me. Okay, what I would do is position it in different places. Even if you know where you've put it, right? Run it on a random timer and as you're working through your house, even if you've walked past it, it'll beep and then you're going to reposition yourself to take that shot and then after that shot, you know, have this one somewhere in the room and just shoot it as quickly as you can. You know, you've got to also use your imagination. Like I said, almost have a little fun with it. But you will realize that this is such a vital tool for training. Now, you do get different training targets. These overlays that you can put over your targets. You can put something like that. If you want to go, if you want to make it super cool, you can cut this. That's sort of your nasal cavity area. If someone gets hit there, it's, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of bad things about to happen. Um, and so you can run things like the Mozambique drill, you know, body, body, head. Yeah, I'm not going to get into my feelings about the Mozambique drill for concealed carry for civilians, but if you want to, you can, you know, set up, for example, the speed target at uh, chest height and the normal target at head height, and then as it beeps, draw stroke fire shot. Now, obviously, you can't um, you can't pull the trigger again because your 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 trigger would have been depressed. You're going to have to act the slide. That's just an unfortunate fact of the the the, the, the makeup of a firearm. But then you can take another shot and immediately rack it and go for the head. You know, it's it's not exactly the most ambiguous, drill, but it's close. It's better than you can get without it. So the Kieran target and speed reactive targets and this laser round, in my opinion, the best at home training you can get. Hands down. I, I don't see anything better than this. Um, if you're looking at financial investment, like I said, a shot timer is like four and a half thousand rand. This whole setup, both, both of these as well as the round is like 3,800 rand. And you can buy them separately, you know, one buy, one month buy the round, the next month buy the speed target, the month after buy another speed target. I think after the targets, you've got to go for the speed target. If you can afford it, 700 bucks more, 800 bucks more actually, but like five times better um, than just the normal target. And you basically have, in my opinion, like I said, the best at home training tools you can possibly have. Now, this is available in South Africa. It's also available overseas. I will leave links down below to where you can buy it's two different sites overseas. Go to one site, South Africa goes to another site. And as I said, it does not take the place of range time. It does not take the place of training courses, but it is the best training you can do at home. With this, if you train with it diligently, you take it seriously and you apply your mind to it in a way that you can use them realistically, by the time you go to the range, your draw stroke should be down, your defeat in the cover, defeat in the cover garment should be down, your draw stroke should be down, getting sight alignment should be down, sight picture should be down, 
all you've really got to do then is learn to manage recoil. That's going to come down to, to, to grip and just getting used to it. If you've never shot before, learning to manage recoil is something you will learn over time. I want to say huge thanks. I want to say huge thanks to Jorgen for exposing me to this. Um, I'll leave a link to the website as well. They've got full training manuals on everything and explains exactly what it goes through. I didn't cover everything because this video is already long and it would just been longer. I think it's the best training tool. I've said this like five times in this video. And I can tell you even my speed on these targets. When I got these, I thought I was fast, but I was running about 1.7 seconds. I'm now at 1.7 seconds with on the target at 10 meters with the overlay on it, right? And I've only been to the range once since I've got this. So I can tell you, it has definitely taken down my shot time and improved my accuracy. A modern firearm owner like myself looking for modern solutions to modern problems. I'm a red dot guy. I'm a weapon mounted light guy, you know, uh, mag, uh, mag well, you know, I'm looking for all the angles. I'm looking for all the edges. I know a lot of, I know a lot of the old school guys, they'll be like, oh, you got to go to the range. And I appreciate that I understand that, but I'm... I look at things like this and I'm like, if I can use tech to improve just anything one bit, I'm going to jump on it. I will leave links to everything down below, including, including where you can buy it. Definitely take advantage of this. One of the best training tools, as far as I'm concerned, on the market. Remember, everything's an opinion, nothing's a recommendation. You make your own decisions. I'm not imposing anything on you. My opinion is, if you're at home and you're training, jump on these things. Huge thanks to Jorgen for sending me these. I really, really appreciate it. I will continue to use them diligently and it will definitely improve my capabilities. I'm going to try my utmost to do a giveaway of these. I'm not giving away these because I love these, but maybe I can twist Jorgen's arm. You never know. The more trained EDC is we have, the better. Maybe someone who trained on something like this might save my life or your life one day. That's it, guys. Have a good week. Train well, be safe. Cheers, God bless.